Half-Life 1 has a pretty big and diverse enemy variety. What if I was to tell you that there used to be a lot more though? Today we'll be taking a look at cut enemies and allies of Half-Life 1. The information known about each of them varies a lot, but we will take the closest look possible and I'll also offer some theories as to why they were cut and how they could have fit into the game where they included. I would love to see some discussion in the comments as well. So let's get right into it. Important announcement! I've just launched my own Discord server. Go and join. It's the top link in the description. It also includes a channel just for members, in which I will be responding more frequently. But yeah, let's get into it. The Archer is the first one we'll be taking a look at. The Archer is a cut Zen alien designed by Chuck Jones that can still be found in the files. It would have been encountered in underwater sections and it has a total of two attacks, biting and projectile spitting. It even still has some animations left in the game files. I honestly can't see any good reason as to why this was cut. So presumably it was just time constraints. I think it would have been really cool to see them in the underwater sections. Mr. Friendly is arguably the most well-known cut character of any game out there. It was planned to be about the size of a horse, moving in a very awkward shuffling manner that makes a noise similar to fingernails on a chalkboard. We would go around eating bodies, which was Val's way of explaining where bodies disappeared, the real reason being to improve performance. Pretty clever of them. It has a total of three attacks. Spurs, Vomit and... Uh, fatal Copulation, as they so nicely put it. The animations are also still included in the game files. Not the Fatal Copulation one, just to be clear. Spurs would have knocked down the player, which would have caused the player to drop the weapon they were holding. It was even planned for Gorn's glasses to fly off, causing the vision to go blurry. This would have been challenging to implement back in the 90s though. Vomit would probably just be a ranged sort of attack. Fatal Copulation is, I think, self-explanatory? and probably explains why it was cut eventually. The story as how it came to be is interesting as well. Ken Birdwell, a software developer at Valve, had a friend whose 12 year old brother used to draw, the name of the 12 year old being Ted Backman, who is also credited with creating this creature. Ken Birdwell asked him to provide some sketches for possible monsters. He presented several very sexual oriented monsters to him and Gabe Newell, which Birdwell was not expecting. Among these was Mr. Friendly, who obviously looked like... I think you can figure. Ted Beckman explained the concept that the creature would draw its victims in and perform the failure copulation. Which Gabe seemed interested enough in to have a discussion about. The sexual themes of some of these creatures were intended to elicit a response from the innate homophobia of 14 year old boys. A significant portion of the targeted audience for the game. Which I'm not exactly sure what they were thinking here. Honestly it sounds like it would have made the 14 year old boys even more homophobic. So it was cut for the better I'd say. If I was to theorize, Mr. Friendly would have been used to further enhance the horror aspect of Half-Life 1. I made a video on Half-Life Echoes last week, an awesome mod for Half-Life 1 that actually features Mr. Friendly. I recommend checking out that video and the mod, as I think it made a great use of the NPC similar to how it would have most likely been used, were it included in the final game. The snap bug is one I must admit I never heard about before. It can actually still be found in the game fights and was designed by Chuck Jones. It's slightly bigger than a head crab. Its attacks are unknown. It would have most likely attacked the player by jumping at them or by hiding until the player steps on it, similar to a bear trap. As it is standing on four legs, it would have probably been quite a bit faster than normal headcrabs. It was most likely cut due to headcrabs and slugs already being a thing, thus being kinda redundant. I do have a bit of a theory about them though. Very minor half of Alex spoiler, I guess? Skip forward to this timestamp if you don't want any kind of spoiler. In Half-Life Alex, there are the armored headcrabs that you can only kill by shooting at them from below. I like to think that this could maybe be a reused concept from the snap bug, thus leading me to believe that it is possible that the snap bug would have only been killable from below. Getting out of Half-Life Alex spoilers though. Another thing I believe is that these would have been used in the minefield section in surface tension, but were later replaced by the mines. Perhaps they would have dug out of the ground similar to how headcrabs would later do in Half-Life 2. Egon is the first non-enemy character we're taking a look at. I mean, immediately by looking at him, you can tell why he was cut. He appears in the Half-Life Alpha, which to be fair, did have more ridiculous looking character models. He was apparently named after Egon Spengler from the Ghostbusters franchise. Also, the Gluon Gun's entity name is Weapon underscore Egon, which might be a leftover reference to this guy. Perhaps he was planned to be the one to give us a Gluon Gun. The robot grunt is only semi-cut basically, but let me first get into what it is exactly. They're basically the exact same as the normal grunts we know and love, even with the same voice lines. It was seemingly planned to be fighting alongside the HECU at one point, though later cut. It can still be found in the multiplayer version, a different color variation with the name Robo. Now here's why it's only semi-cut. Germany used to have very strict censorship laws when it came to video games. Video games were being banned left and right, which led to Valve actually making separate versions of the games for the German market. These were mostly the same, though they did leave out all the gore and killing people. For example, Team Fortress 2 had no real gibbs or blood. 
It's just people exploding into toys. And left for that, all the bodies would just fade away and have no impact holds. Now, thankfully, Germany has gotten a bit looser regarding these laws and you are able to remove these censorships by just contacting Steam support. Which, by the way, never worked for me in both Half-Life 1 and Team Fortress 2. 1000 hours of TF2 have never seen blood in the game. Part of the German censorship in Half-Life 1 was the grunts being replaced by these robots. Also another funny quirk, scientists in the German version could be killed, but they just sit down and fade away instead, which is pretty funny. It could have been interesting if the robot grunts were actually seen in the final game though as their own separate enemy. The Quiver Creature has very little info on it. It was designed by Chuck Jones. Quiver Creature is also not its actual name. It was simply included in the Half-Life Alpha, which was known as Quiver at the time. It would have been an alien Decapod. Decapod basically meaning a crustacean. And it would have a huge horn, tentacles being its main weapon, which were later reused for the tentacles we know and love. It also had heavy armor all around itself, which meant it could only really be killed by shooting at it in the face. It would probably have been encountered in Zen. This second Quiver creature has even less info on it. It was designed by Ted Beckman, the same kid that made Mr. Friendly. There is truly no info about it. It would have appeared in Zen most likely as well. I think both the Quiver creatures do look pretty cool. It's sad that so little is known about them. The female scientist is another cut ally. It can be found in the Half-Life source files. She was included in the Half-Life Alpha and was to appear in the cut X-Lab. She would have sent the player on a quest to align a satellite. After returning, she would betray the player by calling in the HECU to kill Gordon. Valve however couldn't find out how to correctly script or model the scene, so they just scrapped it. This concept of being betrayed was later reused for Judith Mossman, where it worked a lot better. Looking at her design, she has a bit of an afraid expression due to her only being found after the resonance cascade. And I mean, I sadly can't say that I'm surprised at how she's designed when it comes to clothes and body shape. That was just literally every woman in a video game at that time. I don't think any female scientist in real life has ever walked around like that at the workplace. I do wonder why we never see female scientists in Half-Life 1 besides the protagonists of Half-Life Decay. Also, there is actually a great Half-Life mod called Signal Lost that features the female scientists. I'll be sure to make a video about Signal Lost as well someday. Now, Poly Robo is even more than a cut enemy really. It is as early as it gets. It was used in a Gold Soul skeletal animation demonstration and was seen in the Half-Life Alpha. Mainly designed to stress and test the engine. At the point this guy was made, skeletal animation was pretty hot stuff. So to see it happening live in a video game was mind-blowing. It was also originally intended to crash the engine, which it however did not do. It was a little dance, which is believed to be based on the old Uga Chaka dancing baby. Its model being based on the Centrady tactical battle pod from the anime Super Dimension Fortress Macros. Described as a demonic bipedal monster, the charger is a bit more of a well-known cut enemy. And no, I'm not talking about that charger. Charger! It can still be found in the half of SDK files and was designed by Ted Bagman once more. It would have been a two-legged insect-like creature. Its head would have been really small and could be covered up by two flaps it had on its sides, thus protecting it well against fatal headshots. It would have had seven eyes spread out across its body and six pointed teeth. There are some leftover animations that show the creature flying around and apparently not actually using its legs that much. It would have charged the player, wrapped the player's head in its flaps and then hit you with its legs at the end of the charge. There were also some spitting animations, which probably would have been similar to what we eventually got with the bolt squids. If I had to guess, I'd say they were cut for technical reasons, making the player move along the charging animation could be hard to implement. There is actually a great Half-Life mod called Invasion that features it, even featuring custom animations. There is also a cancelled source mod called Opposing Force 2 that would have featured it. Even though it was cancelled, you can still download some of the source files that it released. Some of them actually playable. The Flocking Floater was also designed by Ted Beckman. Man, poor guy, like all of his enemies were cut. He did end up getting a job though and a ton of his enemies were included, just so you know. Back to the topic though. The flocking floaters are described as a living balloon with a faintly glowing head. The gases trapped inside its head are what keeps it afloat. It has a feathery antenna similar to a moth. It would taste the air to look for group mates or food. It would have been passive when not attacked. It would have attacked the player by shooting projectiles. There were also cut cut plans for it to have melee attacks. The spines on its back would have been poisonous as well. The flocking floaters were meant to be seen in Honor Rail, where HECU soldiers would have been fighting them instead of Vortigons. They would have also been seen when arriving at the secondary tram lift. If you want to see them in action, check out Field Intensity or the video I made on Field Intensity. The Human Sergeant is probably my favorite cut enemy of Half-Life. Designed by Chuck Jones, this was meant to be a bit of a mini-boss. He smokes a fat cigar, has a flat top haircut and an attitude. He would have wielded multiple weapons including a M60 that was later replaced for a minigun, and dual wielded a lot of rocket launchers that he would fire occasionally. 
who would also melee attack the player if they got too close. There is also a combat knife included in the texture, but it is unclear if this was supposed to be used. The M60 was later reused for the cut jet ski of RFF2, and the low rocket launcher was reused in Counter Strike Condition Zero Deleted Seeds. Quite a long title. The Human Sergeant can be found in multiple Half Life mods, including Sweet Half Life and Sven Koa. Out of all the cut enemies, this is the one I wish was in the game the most. The Stuka Bat is an interesting enemy. It was to be a bat like creature with six eyes. It was designed by Chuck Jones and would have appeared on Blast Pit, on a rail, in Zen, and possibly more chapters. It was able to hang on ceilings and walk on the ground. It would also not always attack the player and emit Bird of Prey sounds. It would have used its claws to attack you and fly at you, similar to how Stuka dive bombers flew. Stukas were part of the German Luftwaffe in World War II. The longer name for it being Sturzkampfflugzeug, which when translated literally means dive fight plane. I'm really curious as to why this ended up being cut, as I think the Stuka bat makes for an interesting concept. It can be found in mods like Field Intensity, in which it makes a small cameo, and in Atropy 2. I must admit, in Atropy 2 they didn't really feel that fleshed out. The mod makers have also said that they would have liked to cut the Stuka bat, but they were too close to the deadline to do so. The Panther Eye is another favorite of mine. Roughly the size of a panther, it would have thrown its victims on the ground and attacked them. Its mouth is positioned below itself, which is a pretty interesting choice, also seen in Hound Eyes. Which in case you didn't know, yes, Hound Eyes have mouths. Diablo seems to have been another name for this enemy, as that is how the Foldite can be found in it is called. It was also designed by Chuck Jones. It would have been very fast and was able to jump great lengths. It also had animations where it crawls around as to sneak up on its prey. It overall behaved very similarly to how real panthers behave. The panther eye can be found in a lot of Half-Life 1 mods. Azure Sheep is a great example. Sphere is, uh, interesting. It can still be found in the files. It is a small alien that can open and close itself in what seems to be an egg of sorts. The entire creature being made up out of three eyes, one larger than the other two. It has features similar to the Vortigaunt. While mostly referred to as just Sphere, Control Sphere seems to be its actual name. As at one point, Vortigaunts were to own a device called Control Sphere, according to the notes for an alpha version. I think it's pretty safe to say that this entity was said Control Sphere. Not a lot more is known about these things, except that they would have shot something out of their eyes once opened. What do you think about this little guy? The construction worker, designed by Chuck Jones, is probably my favorite cut ally. The construction worker was meant to be seen just working on stuff around Black Mesa. Pretty self-explanatory. They are seen wearing some kind of device on their back, the purpose of which is unknown. The construction workers were planned to be used in the tram ride at the beginning and in the blast pit map C1A4, where the workers would be seen inspecting something on the track and then quickly climbing out of the way once the player approaches. These also weren't exactly cut, as they can still be found in the game alongside their animations, albeit a bit broken. They simply went unused, which I find to be a shame. It was also planned for them to reappear in Half-Life 2. This was scrapped though. I will be sure to cover that concept when I cover cut enemies of Half-Life 2. Also, the construction worker is found in a ton of Half-Life mods, the best example being Half-Life Echoes. Now here's a real interesting one, the Kingpin. The Kingpin can still be found in the game files, simply missing its AI. The Kingpin would have used psionic attacks and defenses. It is about twice the height of an average person and has a massive brain filling its entire body. It was planned to at least be found in Zen in some case. It is rumored that it would have been unable to be hit by missile weapons due to its psionic defenses. The concept of the Kingpin was later reused for the alien command soldier, which is another cut enemy, and the command advisor, also sharing its worm-like design and two front limbs. I think this enemy is one of the most interesting ones. You could find it in quite a few mods, most notably Half-Life Echoes, which I think perfectly implemented it. In Half-Life Echoes it seems to be some kind of future seeing being, which I think is incredibly interesting. The Fast Walker, also known as Spider-Saw, was planned to be an ally to the player. It would have been highly intelligent. It would have barked to warn the player and would run away from major opponents. It would learn to love Gordon, thanks to him providing it with fresh meat, which would inadvertently happen through combat. It would have been able to use machinery with its limbs. It would also have night vision and heat detection. Sadly, this guy was also cut really early. It was designed by Ted Beckman once more. I can see this guy being cut due to it being too hard to program, but honestly I'm not too sure. While I do think the idea sounds cute, I do think the game was better off without it. Love you though, Fast Walker. There are a lot of unused minor Black Mesa characters, by which I mean scientists, and specifically, their names on lockers. I must admit this barely even counts as a cut ally, but I think it's worth mentioning. Now, this is a list of all the names that are seen in the game on the lockers, all of these names being references to Valve employees, obviously. This is a list of cut name tags, which are also all references to Valve employees. 
Not a lot to say here. Probably just unused due to not finding a place to fit them. Shout out to all these people though. Now for the final cut character we have none other than the protagonist himself. The old version of Gordon Freeman. Ivan the Space Biker. Designed by Chuck Jones. This version of Gordon featured a more rough looking design, including a full, wild beard that made him look like a biker, and a green HEV suit. He also wears no glasses and has a flat top haircut. It is included in the game files of Half-Life 1, though unviewable due to being an older version of the model format. It was however correctly ported to Half-Life Source, which means you can look at it there. He was cut due to Tessa thinking that he looked like a homeless hobo. The name Ivan the Space Biker is actually included in TF2. When you spawn a bot in TF2 it's assigned a random name. One of the possible names being Ivan the Space Biker. I think these were all the cut Half-Life 1 enemies and allies there are. If I did forget something though, be sure to let me know. I will most likely do a Half-Life 2 edition sometime soon as well. Also, don't forget to join the Discord. It's the top link in the description. So yeah, otherwise, thank you for watching.